Can I call a, a big bull in? I don't know. We'll see. One bull is really nice. We've been tracking now for about six hours. This is not the way I had planned it to be, that's for sure. That's a huge relief. I don't know how much penetration I got. So I'm just trying to pick him up. After the shot, he went downhill and he kept walking. I felt that I didn't have amazing penetration. That was the first thing that I felt. The shot placement I felt was really good. So I came back up the hill instead of pushing, pushing. And I just caught a glimpse of him, you know, walking into that drainage. And I don't know, this is like worst part about hunting right now is the unknown whether you've actually just wounded an animal or whether you've actually killed it and just have to figure it out. Okay, he walked this trail. He's got a trail. I would I wouldn't say that it appears that he's moving for sure. He's not stationary in one place, but you know, we can pick up blood on the, on the ground and then on the trees about this level. We just gotta keep following it. So this is the first really good sign that we've had. We've been following a blood trail now for, what, a, over a kilometer, and it's taken this number of hours. But he bedded down here and he's bleeding hard. That's a really good sign. I think that he's definitely mortally wounded, so it's just a matter of not pushing him. This is what we did. I think we pushed him out of this bed and he got up and walked away. He must have just been hit a little bit too far back or I don't know yet, but we will find out. We've been tracking now for about six hours and we're less than like a mile from where I took the shot. It's been a tough go as far as staying on the trail. You know, we saw some really good sign that, yeah, he's hit really good. 
and then it clots up and it's just sporadic and then you get into another good spot. I think that what we're doing is just by continuing to follow is not the best plan right now, especially with the daylight. We'll pick it up in the morning and uh, see how it goes. This is not the way I had planned it to be, that's for sure. Our worst case scenario just happened last night and has nothing to do with the temperature or the wind. The snow moving in from the north, obviously it's completely changed the game as far as what we thought we were gonna do this morning. We thought we would just get right on the blood trail and probably follow it right to them. That's become a, a not so realistic option. It's really the options that we have are a grid pattern and cover the country. The other one is get up high and hopefully spot them. He was heading toward a drainage, and if he's hit hard as you know, I believe he is, he's really not going to go uphill. If he beds down, he's not going to get back up, not after the cold night like this. Hopefully we find him and uh, he's done. I chose to come up high and glass into where I think that he's going to be. So we went up, got some elevation. I can look right over across this drainage into where we feel that he walked to last night. And hopefully we pick him up. If we can't pick him up, then we'll go down to the blood trail. And if that doesn't work, then we'll literally do a grid pattern and we will find him. He's straight across, he's in the open. His one pan is just right up in the air. You can see his body and everything. So he's laying there and he's dead. There's nothing worse than the feeling of taking an animal and not retrieving it. But there he is. Let's go see him. Coming down off the top of the mountain, heading over to our bull, and I came across this shed. You can tell that these moose are wintering here. This is a decent bull, you know, he's got, he's got a little bit out front. He's got long points, which is pretty cool. This point here is particularly long. I would call this probably your average Yukon moose. We'll take that one home and put it up with the rest of them. That's a huge relief. Ah. The ravens have already been on them. That is a big hole where that arrow went in. He's been dead for a while. The ravens have already been here. It's amazing to me how far they can actually go sometimes, you know, with an arrow in them like that. And he probably died pretty quick because for the ravens to be on him and for there to be that big of a hole in him, it's pretty wild. Last night was an extremely long night in the tent. At 4.30 in the morning when I saw how much snow had piled up, I didn't think that the snow was going to be a benefit, but it turns out that it was. The arrow placement was better than I actually thought that it was. If you don't hit them 100% perfect, they can go fair ways. Especially if you know they've got a strong will to live. If you don't quit and you keep putting in the effort, 
you know, the chances are that eventually you will find them. Certainly in, in our situation in the Yukon, when the temperatures are like this, you're not likely to, to lose any meat where I understand that other places are not like that. So we're extremely happy. We've got ourselves winter meat and we can pack up and head out with a smile on our face and knowing that we put in the effort that it took to, to retrieve this bull. It's been a fantastic hunt. It's been a roller coaster for sure. A lot of highs and a lot of lows, but hard work and the persistence paid off in the end. And winter is here and it's time for us to leave. So we need to make our way out of the high country and down into the timber and back to civilization. It's that time of year late October and hunting season is drawing to an end.